Vietnam recently has gotten a lot of hype for being one of the best destinations for digital nomads. But is it really worth the hype? Today, we're gonna find out. So if I'm being honest, I think Vietnam has a lot more pros than cons, even though at the end of the day, I would never live there. So the biggest issue that I have with Vietnam is the infrastructure. This is a big problem in all of Southeast Asia, but in Vietnam, it is some of the worst that I've ever seen in my life. They are notorious for how bad the traffic is, and it's something that you really have to see for yourself to believe. People are even riding their motorcycles on the sidewalks. That's how chaotic it is. I value order and rules, and Vietnam is a place that does not have that. If you go to District 1 in Saigon, it feels like I'm in a European city, or Russia, or Ukraine, or something like that. And then you just go one district over, and all of a sudden, it's poor, it's dirty, Dirty, it's extremely loud, super polluted. So it's really a tale of two worlds. So in general, Vietnam seems to be a little less developed than Thailand. However, there's a big push for education. So I think they're gonna be developing quite quickly over the next few years. But as of this moment, I feel like their infrastructure is not that developed. There's no real good public transportation either. At least in Bangkok, they have a metro system. Vietnam does not have any of that. So you have to take your own moto or taxi. But the crazy thing is that in my whole entire time there, I think I only saw one accident than ever, which really blows my mind. There's just like this vibe in the air that everything's just extremely dirty and not well kept. So I was, remember I was walking around in Saigon and there were rats everywhere. There is a lot of trash in the street. There's a lot of open livestock everywhere and there's just no sense of real cleanliness. Pollution in general is just a big issue all over Southeast Asia. And I always find myself developing a cough and experiencing a lot of skin issues. They also don't have drinkable tap water. And this is a big issue in all of Asia. When I was staying in Da Nang, my building actually had a filter system so I could drink from the tap. So eating street food is kind of a gamble if you're not used to it. But I know a lot of Westerners get shocked by the lack of cleanliness because if you see the way people are cooking their food or the way that they're cleaning the dishes for the street food, most people will think to themselves this is not hygienic at all. So one of the reasons why I would not live in Vietnam is the language barrier. Thankfully, compared to other Asian languages, it is written in Roman alphabet, so you can kind of make out what people are saying. But compared to a place like Thailand or the Philippines, there's not a lot of people in Vietnam that speak English. For me personally, every time I try to move somewhere, I want to take it upon myself to learn about the culture and try to integrate as much with the people. And what's the point of going to a different country just to make expat friends? But I do like the fact that they don't speak English and they haven't really been exposed to Western media yet, because I think because of that, they're a lot more traditional in a lot of their beliefs. Vietnam is more of an authentic Asian experience compared to some of the other countries in Southeast Asia. Another problem Vietnam has is that it's very very difficult to get a long-term visa there. Thailand recently announced a digital nomad visa. In the Philippines, you can get up to a three-year visa as well. But in Vietnam, most of the people that I know have to do visa runs every 90 days and have to constantly be applying for a new tourist visa. That has worked for a lot of my friends. They'll just go to Thailand for a couple days and come back and they seem to not have any problems. I personally am just not a fan of Southeast Asian weather. It's just hot and humid and hotter and more humid. Some people like that, it's just not for me personally. I like four seasons, I like colder weather. Okay, so we gotta talk about some cultural differences. This is a very interesting topic because out of all the Asian countries that I visited, I actually felt the most at home culturally in Vietnam compared to maybe Thailand and the Philippines. I'm Chinese, right? And a few of my cousins are dating or married to Vietnamese girls, and that seems to be a really good fit. There's a lot of cultural similarities between us. However, if you come from a Western country, if you're white, black or Latino, I think the cultural difference is gonna be very intense for a lot of people. Vietnamese people, kind of like Polish people, are very cold at first, but once you get to know them, then they open up to you and they're a lot more smiley. I think I was treated well because I could pass as Vietnamese, so people didn't really see any issue with me, and once I started waving at my neighbors, everybody waved back at me. A couple times when I went out to dinner and I saw this one white guy with a bunch of Vietnamese people and he just looked so lost. He was probably on a Tinder date, he probably didn't understand the culture, he doesn't speak the language and it just seemed like he was super out of place So because Vietnam is still a developing country It's not necessarily a place that I would like to raise my kids in it doesn't make a lot of sense coming from a first world country and having a stronger passport And then moving to one of these third world countries to settle down for the long term Vietnam and many of the Southeast Asian countries It's easy to get lost just wandering for a couple of years because it's so cheap and life is so good There's also limited work opportunity for foreigners I imagine if you want to work there you're gonna have to eventually learn Vietnamese at some point and their work culture is extremely intense if you come from America or an East Asian country it's things that we're used to but if you come from like a European country it's gonna be a huge culture shock for you there's
there's internet censorship in Vietnam. It's still a socialist country. The, the government censors a lot of things. So while you're traveling around the world, sometimes it's very difficult to find reliable Wi-Fi. You can go to a mall and you'll find a network called Coffee Free Wi-Fi. But this could actually be somebody hosting free Wi-Fi in order to get your information. This is known as a man in the middle attack. NordVPN will encrypt your data no matter if your connection is secure or not. Netflix is different everywhere around the world. So I've been recently connecting my Netflix to the UK because they have friends and Spongebob. So imagine you're on a date, right? The girl tells you, Ooh, Friends is my favorite show ever. You invite her back to your place, the mood is set, you guys are gonna Netflix and chill, and boom! Title is not available in your region. She gets angry with you for lying to her, she storms out, you have blue balls. You don't want that to happen to you, right? That's why NordVPN is an amazing tool. Right now, they're offering my viewers additional four months for any two-year plan and other specials if you click the link, nordvpn.com slash where. It's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee, nordvpn.com slash where. So let's talk about some of the pros of Vietnam. Number one, you have to talk about the food. It's not as flavorful as Thai food, but I kind of like the simplicity of Vietnamese food and how healthy it is. There's a reason why Vietnam is the skinniest country in the world. If you look at their cuisine, the meals are very light and they use a lot of herbs. I found myself eating like four to five times a day in Vietnam and it's so easily accessible that you only eat when you're hungry. The best thing about Southeast Asia is that it's actually cheaper to go out and eat on the street than it is to cook at home. Of course, the number one reason why people are moving to Vietnam is the cost of living. It's extremely cheap. You can definitely get by on a thousand dollars a month. For what you pay and what you get, I think Vietnam still has incredible value. To me, Vietnamese women are the most beautiful Asian women out there. They have these really delicate, soft facial features. They look Chinese, East Asian, but instead of being extremely skinny or having rectangular bodies like a lot of Asian girls do, Vietnamese women have curves. To me, it's kind of like the perfect mix because they have the culture that's similar to mine, they have a body type that I like, and they have beautiful faces. In general, the girls prefer to be with Asian guys rather than foreigners. They actually have a bad term for a lot of the white foreigners that go to Vietnam, losers at home, <laughs> which I thought was quite funny. Different to the West, a lot of people will live at home until they get married. I've heard that in Hanoi, the women are a lot more traditional. And as you go down to Saigon, the women are a little more liberal and I guess free and independent. But for the most part, Vietnam is still quite a traditional country. Hoarding is still common, you know, asking the dad for permission to go out with a girl or to marry her. So interesting enough, the beaches in Vietnam were the most surprising thing to me. I spent five weeks in Da Nang. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. You rent a motorbike for the month and you just have unlimited freedom to explore the city. It's a beautiful city. There's a lot of great places to eat. The beach was extremely clean and well kept. I think the thing that really stood out to me the most about Vietnam was how deep of a cultural experience it was. When you live in Vietnam, you really get to experience things like the locals do. Being able to see all of the neon signs, eat on the street with a bunch of locals. Vietnam is also a very beautiful, diverse country. You can go to the Lat up in the mountains. You can do the Ha Jong Loop. There's a lot of beautiful nature in Vietnam. One of my favorite things is the nightlife, right? I just feel like their style of life is very similar to how I like to live my life. There's a lot of amazing things things to do at night. You can get a meal up until two in the morning. They have a bunch of computer cafes everywhere. And they also like karaoke a lot. It's quite funny. You'll just hear some random Vietnamese grandpa singing really poorly at the top of his lungs. I loved how easy it was to get a moto there and then being able to ride around the city. And I feel like I really got to blend in and experience what it was like as a local. Vietnam is also incredibly safe. Nothing bad is really going to happen to you. Latin America is cheap, but there's a lot of safety issues. Thankfully in Vietnam, not only is it cheaper, it's also also extremely safe and that to me is extreme value. My favorite part about Vietnam is the fashion. Everything is made in Vietnam, but you can go straight to the source. Very well fitted, high quality clothing for the price. There's a store in Da Nang that I love called G-Men and I bought so many clothes from them. I know a lot of people that like to get tailored things there. You can get a tailored suit, you can get a tailored dress. They have so many good options. Vietnam is also a rapidly developing country and it's exciting being a part of a country like that because there's going to be a lot of opportunity in the future and there's just an energy in the air right now, very similar to Poland, that they want to take their country to the next level. I would love to go back to Vietnam for a couple months at the time, but I cannot recommend it to people for long-term living. What country should I do next? Let me know what you think down below. Peace.